Hello, I'm Miss Melinda at the Kannapolis branch of the Cabarrus County Library. Welcome to November's Art Venture. Today we're going to talk about two different artists, George Seurat and Andy Goldsworthy. George Seurat was born in France in 1859 and Andy Goldsworthy was born in England in 1956. George Seurat was a painter and Andy Goldsworthy is a sculptor and a photographer. Even though these two artists were born more than 100 years apart and lived in different countries and worked in very different ways with different materials, they had one big thing in common. They both were very influenced by science. George Seurat was fascinated by the work of one particular scientist that studied color. His name was Michel Chevrel. Chevrel worked in a for a company that made tapestries, and he was interested in coming up with more vibrant shades of color for the tapestries. And what he realized was that it wasn't the dyes that were actually important. What was important is what two colors were next to each other in the tapestries. So we're gonna take a look at two X's on two different color backgrounds. Do these two X's look like they're the same color to you? To me, they don't, but they are. They only look different because they're against backgrounds of different colors. Our brains actually play a part in what colors we see. Those two X's are the same shade, but our brain perceives them as different when colors are on different backgrounds. Chevrel also discovered that different colors appear more vivid when they are with another specific color. He called these two colors that made each other more vivid complementary pairs, and he created a color wheel to show which colors are complementary. The colors across from each other on the wheel are complementary pairs. So when yellow and purple are next to each other, both colors look more intense. Same for blue and orange and green and red. Chevrel's wheel had more colors on it I use this one because it makes it easy to see the pairs. Chevrel also discovered that when you put two colors close together, your mind will blend them and come up with a third color. It's sort of the same way that when you mix paint, if you mix blue and red, you get purple, or when you mix yellow and blue, you get green. But instead of physically mixing the colors together the way you would with paint, Chevrel thought if you just put the two colors side by side very close to each other, your mind would blend them. And so if you put a blue dot next to a red dot, your mind, your brain would come up with the color purple. And Seurat found this very inspiring and it came up, he came up with a completely new way of painting called pointillism. In pointillism, the artist puts small dots next to each other and creates a whole painting that's just made up of dots. So um, Seurat thought that using the viewer's brain and eyes to combine the colors made the colors more intense and more luminous, and this is something he wanted in his paintings. So let's take a look at one of his most famous paintings. It's called A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte. This entire painting is made up of small dots of paint. And it's a big painting, about seven feet by 10 feet. That is a lot of dots. It took Seurat more than two years to paint it. Let's look at a close up from another painting by Seurat. See the dots? Now let's look even closer. Here's the same man's face, but with a more extreme close-up. So you can see all the little dabs of color next to each other. When you look at a pointillist painting, you have to stand back from it to get the full effect because you need some distance for your brain to do that blending of colors that Seurat was looking for. Seurat said, some say they see poetry in my painting, I see only science. Seurat was a very methodical, deliberate painter. He thought a lot before he painted. And that was 
different from the other painters who were working around the same time period um, called the Impressionists, they were very spontaneous and usually tried to capture a specific moment by painting more quickly than Seurat. He definitely took his time. And there was a mathematician that was very influential in Seurat's work. His name was Charles Henry. And Henry believed that certain colors created certain emotions in the viewer. He thought that warm colors like red and orange um, gave people a sense of happiness and cool colors like blue and green gave a sense of sadness. And Seurat was very influenced by this and was very careful in which colors he chose depending on what emotional effect he wanted his paintings to have. Charles also had done research about the direction of lines and how that made people feel. He felt that lines that slanted upwards gave sort of a happy feeling, while lines that slanted downwards gave feelings of sadness, and lines that were pretty much straight across gave feelings of calm. So let's look at another painting of Seurat called The Circus. In this painting, Seurat chose to use mostly warm colors, red, orange, and yellow, to create a feeling of happiness. He also used many lines directed upward to achieve this emotion. Take a look at the arms and skirt and even the hair of the woman riding on the horse, for example. I hope you've had fun looking at some of the work of George Seurat. Why not try to use the pointillist style yourself? So you can um, use Q-tips or pencil erasers to paint using little dots, or you can take a coloring sheet and use dots of marker or dots with a crayon to fill it in. And just think about which colors that you're putting next to each other to create the effect that, that you're looking for. Next up, Amanda's going to talk to you about Andy Goldsworthy and how his work connects to science. Hi, my name is Amanda and I am super excited to talk to you today about the artist Andy Goldsworthy and also how science relates to his art. So Andy was born in England in 1956. He now lives in Scotland and he's been doing art since the 70s. He studied at Bradford College of Arts and Preston Polytechnic, and he also was a professor in sculpture at Cornell University, which is pretty impressive. The really cool thing about Andy's work is it's pretty much all in nature. And he's very conscious and aware and environmentally friendly in his art. In nature and I'll show you some pictures here in a little bit so you can see what he does. The way that his art relates to science through nature is how he approaches it. He takes his time, sits and soaks in the environment and he observes all the little details just as an environmental scientist would do. He tries not to use any man-made materials whether it's with his tools or with his actual artwork and whatever he makes, he wants it to be able to decay and move on through its life cycle very naturally and become a part of the earth again. Now I would like to show you some of his artwork while I tell you a little bit more about his process and how it relates to science. The materials that Andy likes to use are brightly colored flowers, icicles, leaves, mud, pine cones, snow, stone, twigs, and thorns, pretty much anything he can find in his environment around him. He chooses to only work with nature. He often only uses his bare hands, teeth, and handmade tools with the materials that he finds around him. When he begins an art piece, he first tunes in with the environment around him. He takes everything in mentally, physically, and emotionally. He listens, he observes, very much like an environmental scientist. 
once he feels drawn to the way the materials express themselves, he begins to create. He takes the very materials from nature around him and then artistically puts them back together in a new expression in his own way. He's sewn together leaves with pine needles. He's allowed art pieces to float a lot on the water and be carried away with the current. He's used icicles and broken them up and put them back together in a new form. He's always working towards a new discovery. He talks a lot about how everything is changing. And in his photography, which is a major part of his art, he shows the process from the beginning to the end, from life to death. He talks about how nature is truly unstoppable and how it affects the man-made world. One of my favorite quotes from Andy Goldsworthy is, we often forget that we are nature. Nature is not something separate from us. So when we say we have lost our connection to nature, we've lost our connection to ourselves. Andy's artwork is really unique and amazing. And I bet you could do something very similar yourself. Here are some examples of some things that you can do out in nature to create art, just like Andy Goldsworthy. You can use leaves that you find, little pebbles, create patterns. You can do weaving. The possibilities are endless. As long as you're taking in consideration the environment around you and that you are not leaving anything that's hazardous to the animals and always try to respect the environment around you. I hope that you enjoyed this month's art venture and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye!